Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. My name is Tilly and I'm a strength and conditioning coach. Today I thought we would talk about something that I have seen be controversial in the past but I really don't think it needs to be. We're going to be talking about why kids should lift. Yes, lift weights, resistance training, strength training. That is what I'm talking about. Now before we get into all the benefits, I do want to point out that I know a lot of the controversy around kids lifting weights is that it is unsafe. And actually that's not what the research suggests. In comparison to other sports out there like rugby or soccer, lifting weights is actually much, much lower in terms of injury rate per a thousand hours of participation. The majority of issues that arise with weightlifting don't actually come from the activity itself, but it comes from accidents like dropping a weight on your head or on your foot. You can see the difference here between the injuries that occur in adults and in children, and you can see the percentage of which are accidental. The hands and the head do seem to be the most common part because people drop weights, they stop paying attention, or they might lose control. And in the literature when we're looking at kids who do resistance training it is most often that people get injured when there is not a qualified strength and conditioning coach watching them. It can be really tempting for sports teams or clubs to put their least experienced coaches and let them work with the kids but that's not really what we want particularly when the research suggests that qualified supervision is one of the mitigating factors that helps to keep weightlifting or resistance training being really safe for our children. And contrary to all of the information we get on how dangerous weightlifting can be, weightlifting and being strong actually has a protective effect against injuries, particularly musculoskeletal injuries like broken bones, fractures, pulled muscles, tendons. It's previously suggested that a 10% increase in strength training volume could lead to over a 4% decrease in injury prevalence. There's more evidence like this where weaker athletes are 9.5 times more likely to sustain a traumatic knee injury than stronger athletes. And yes, this is a amongst an adolescent population. One of the main reasons, which I'm sure you're familiar with, because it's the same reason that a lot of adults lift as well, and that is for our self-confidence. Often when we have young kids, the weaker children get left behind in sport. They're not picked up as often in talent identification programs. They don't get included. They get picked last because they can't keep up athletically with their peers. And lifting weights can counteract this because it means that everyone's able to participate for as long as they can. When kids lift weights, we're also setting them up for hopefully a really healthy and active Active life. You can see here that when we compare strong to weak individuals, we actually have lower instances of all-cause mortality and of risk of disability. Risk of psychiatric disability, musculoskeletal disability, and that's a pretty significant correlation. Of course, we can argue whether or not being stronger and fitter is actually the only determining cause. There's things like systematic oppression, socioeconomic challenges. I still think that that is a fairly significant finding. And if we're able to teach people the fundamentals of lifting and we're able to get them in the gym as soon as possible and empower them with the knowledge of how to take care of their body and keep it strong for their life, then I believe that that's a really critical thing to consider. Outside of general life or the general population, youth who partake in sports, they usually experience huge amounts of muscle strength increases after they perform a weightlifting or resistance training program. They also generally jump higher and sprint faster. And these are things that will absolutely transfer to sporting performance. We might not see those changes at first when we're still learning about movement techniques and things like that but as we progress and we get stronger and we get more powerful and we're training more specifically for our sport these are benefits that our young kids are going to see now I have said kids and children throughout this because there's actually a higher theorized benefit for your mature age performance if you start a neuromuscular training program that includes lifting weights before puberty you can see here on this diagram the kids who started a neuromuscular training program before puberty actually had a higher mature age performance potential. And this makes complete sense to me because you're capitalizing on years potentially of additional training and additional learning about your body, how it moves and how to exert your force or use your body in athletic context. Whereas if you started after puberty, unfortunately, I started lifting when I was around 14, I think. Potentially I missed out on like five or six years of training. So imagine how good I could have been. <laughs> lifting weights also allows for better retention of tactical and technical skills in our sport. So if you have a kid who is a gymnast, a lot of the skills in gymnastics are based on your ability to hold yourself in that position. For example, a gymnastics coach could give me all of 
of the cues and all of the advice possible on how to execute a handstand, but if I don't have the upper body strength to hold myself in that position, it doesn't really matter. And that's a way that lifting weights can actually assist with our sports. It helps us be better able to make the correct decisions tactically because we likely have the strength to be able to do it, but it also helps technically. It means that we can execute skills to a higher level. Another incredible benefit of lifting weights is that it potentially increases the amount of activity that our kids get. If you have a look at this graph, you can see the recommended level of moderate to vigorous physical activity. This is the required amount. And generally speaking, if we just have kids partaking in a sport, you can see the amount that they actually get in practice and in games. And it is nowhere near the same amount. And I have another graph here to potentially explain why that is. And it's because as we get older, we get more and more time on our screens. We're not as interested as going outside and potentially lifting weights could be an extra addition to all of this. And it'll help us move towards that required amount of physical activity to keep us healthy, strong, fit, and confident. I also do want to make the point of how incredibly important lifting weights is for our young girls and young women. We are socialized in a world that teaches young women that sport is not for them. But perhaps if we socialized our girls from a young age to be strong, to be in the weight room, to be learning about their bodies, learning about the foundations of strength and conditioning and of movement, then maybe we wouldn't see such a large drop off in the teenage years because the girls will have had years of weightlifting or resistance training experience backing them up and helping them to feel empowered in themselves and their choices. I could honestly go on and on about how incredible lifting weights is for our kids, but if you're still listening to this and being like, what, but no, kids shouldn't be lifting. Well, I do want to point out that there is one major reason why kids shouldn't be lifting, and this is honestly how you can dictate whether or not your child or the kids that you're coaching are ready to lift, and that is their ability to take constructive criticism. This is an essential part of anyone lifting, but in particular kids when we're really trying not to get them injured. If you're coaching somebody and they are unable to take on board the feedback that you're giving them, if they're unable to understand how to move their body in a certain way, and or they're not listening or they're not focused, then this is where lifting weights could potentially be really unsafe because we need to be able to put our body in the biomechanically optimal position to prevent injuries and also to make sure that we're moving the most efficiently. If we're not able to take on that feedback, that becomes really challenging and lifting weights does become more risky. If they're not able to do this, then it probably is best that we wait a little bit longer until they are able to do that. So with all of that, I'm currently doing SNC coaching. I have coached young athletes throughout my career so far and I hope to continue to do so in the future because it is so rewarding seeing people go from a level of no SNC experience to being quite confident, strong and powerful. And when we provide programs and we do this in a structured way where we are carefully considering rest intensities and we're considering the focus and the attention span of our athletes, then we can program and advise our athletes in a way that creates competent movers, empowered athletes and overall just strong, badass people. And that's what I want. I want to see people lifting all the time. If we can make it a habit now, Woo, amazing. Anyways, that was a lot of information, a lot of specifics. I've linked everything down below, guys. If you get a chance to have a look, I highly recommend it. And I would love to know your thoughts because I know some people will be cross with this, but have you seen the research? I have. I've spent a long time looking at the research about this. I think kids should absolutely be in the weight room with a educated professional. Have a great day, everybody. I put out new videos every Wednesday and Saturday. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. By the way, you can see the little board games up there. We're a very nerdy house. Be kind to yourself. See you guys. Have a good one.